What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Treads Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I forgot to do the intro at the time. You'll see it gets pretty hectic. But basically in this video I'm going to show you how to prepare a big barbecue meal for your entire family doing 90% of the work far in advance. Coming up! This is a brisket! Pat it dry. And what I got here is a USDA prime brisket. Picked this up at my local grocery store. Nothing too fancy here. Not the best looking brisket in the world. Got a really big amount of deco fat on here. A lot of fat cap on there. But we're going to trim this up and make it look nice and pretty. And I know I've made pastrami on the channel several times in the past. And today we're really not going to do much different than we have before. But in real time right now, it's a couple weeks before Thanksgiving. And I'm heading to see some family over in Wyoming. And they requested that I cook something on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. And whenever I'm thinking about cooking for, you know, 12, 15 people, especially in a place that's not my own kitchen. I always think about what can I bring that'll reheat very well, feed a lot of people, and that I can get most of the work done ahead of time. And pastrami or just brisket in general is always a great option. That's because I can brine it, I can smoke it, and I can vac seal it. And then from there, I can freeze it, put it in my luggage, and then day of, I can pop it in a sous vide and it'll work out just perfectly, maybe even better than if I was gonna cut into it same day. And to be honest, everybody loves pastrami. No one ever makes their own pastrami. Me. It's a crowd pleaser and really I've just been craving it especially with all the warming spices like the cinnamon and the clove in there It makes for a really good holiday meal But simply enough I'm trimming this up the same way I always would just trying to make it nice and aerodynamic Getting rid of any pieces that are gonna burn up like that and of course making sure there's enough fat But not too much fat pretty traditional trim here same way I would for a normal brisket And as always I've trimmed many briskets on this channel So you can look up some designated videos if this is your first time seeing it But really we're just trying to maximize the amount of beautiful sliced pastrami we have at the end of the day and all this trim will be used for burgers or sausage or render that fat down into beef tallow give the old chud scrape very long brisket let's shorten that up a bit and that is looking pretty much perfect to me nice clean backside took that deco fat out gave it some nice shape good amount of fat on there so now we need to go ahead and make a pastrami brine ingredients for our pastrami brine include some black peppercorns mustard seeds allspice berries red chili flake and a couple of cloves. And I'm just gonna dry toast these for a little bit to unlock all their flavors. And while we're at it, we'll throw in the cinnamon sticks too. Just let these toast for a couple minutes. And once smelling nice and fragrant, but nothing's burning, we'll go in with a quart of water. And by that, I mean two quarts of water. Followed by a whole bunch of kosher salt, a whole bunch of brown sugar, or pink curing salt, number one. Some ground coriander. I would have done the whole peppercorns, toasted along with everything else, but they were fresh out. We're also gonna go in with some crushed up garlic cloves, as well as a couple of bay leaves. And just bring this up to a simmer so all that salt and sugar are dissolved. And once this is simmered for a little bit, just to let those spices hydrate and all that salt and sugar have melted, we're gonna go in with the rest of our water in ice water form. That's gonna help cool this down. And the ratios of salt, sugar, pink salt, and everything else is all calculated based off the weight of the water, not the weight of the meat. So as long as you have enough brine to fully submerge your brisket, you should be good to go. And I know it seems like an awful lot of salt and sugar, but remember that brisket's only gonna absorb as much as it can, and the rest of it's all gonna go down the drain when we're done. So now I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit. We're gonna add one more quart of water in ice form for a gallon of water total, and then it's time to inject our brisket. So at this point, you could put this in your fridge for the next seven to 10 days, let this brine the natural way. But if you wanna make the process go a lot quicker, you can bust out the old handy dandy and Injector, and then this process should only take about three days. So what I'm gonna do is take a little strainer here, stick it right in there. That way we don't get any berries or seeds or anything in the injector. Fill it up and just start poking a bunch of holes in this thing. Trying to fill this up as evenly as possible. And it's kind of cool, you can just watch it plump up. And this part can be pretty tedious, but we're just gonna keep going around until it's looking as full as it can get. Trying to go in a nice kind of grid pattern to make sure we get every square inch pumped as full as it can get. And again, this is just gonna speed up the process so it starts brining all the way throughout instead of trying to penetrate its way in just from the sides and the bottom. Oh God, right in the eye. And there we have it after about five, 10 minutes of poking this thing all over. It is looking nice and pumped up. I flipped it over, hit the bottom side a few times. And now we're gonna keep this in this brine, which will help penetrate any spots we may have missed. I'm gonna cover this up and put it in the fridge for the next few days. I'll probably come through and flip it over once or twice. But other than that, I'll see y'all in a couple days. Even on these gloomy, rainy days, you still gotta watch out for that pesky snake in your boot. After being injected and sitting in the brine for three days, 
I poured off all the brine from this pastrami and I gave it a nice good rinsing to make sure there's no berries or mustard seeds or anything stuck to it. And as you can tell, it's got a much different color to it because it has been cured. So now it's time to turn this corned beef brisket into pastrami. And to do that, we need to hit it with a rub. Starting with one part of 16 mesh black pepper, the same amount of some ground coriander, as well as half that amount of some granulated garlic. And just get that nice and mixed up. Actually, in hindsight, I'm gonna double up on the pepper. Two parts pepper, one part coriander, one half part granulated garlic. Get that bark nice and peppery. And simply enough, get this thing covered all over. No need for a binder. This thing just came out of the brine. No need for any salt because this thing has been fully brined which is great because that means we can go on real heavy with this rub flip it over same on the top side and of course we're not going to skip the sides because that would be a rookie move and that is looking pretty much perfect to me let's throw it on the pit so on the pit we go fat cap up fatty side towards the fire make sure it's sitting nice and pretty rocking a post oak fire as i always do and i'm going to cook this thing just like a brisket so probably start out around 250 nice and smoky get that bark developed and then gradually work my way up after a few hours to around 275 degrees and once it's looking nice and barky and registering around 100 80 in turn, we'll give it the old foil boat. We're about 10 hours into this cook and this thing is looking beautiful, nice and barky, feeling pretty good, smelling amazing. I'm getting all those aromas and warming spices right off the bat, just pulling that out of the pit. And the thing about pastrami that's kind of annoying is that this takes forever to cook and it's not like a normal brisket cook, you know? This thing is fully waterlogged, brined, soaked in water for three days. So it's basically like cooking a brisket that's in the stall the whole time. So don't expect it to be like a normal brisket cook, but I'm just just kind of going by temperatures and fat render. It took a long time to get up to about 180 internal, but now we're gonna wrap it up, give it the old foil bow, and it should be a pretty quick process from here. Beautiful. Now back on the pit until this is probing nice and tender and reading somewhere around 200 degrees. And just like that, a couple hours later, off the pit these come. That's right, folks. I made two of these because working in the restaurant industry for a long time, I learned it's a lot better to show up with more food than less food. But I gotta say, finding the fridge space to brine two pastrami's at the same time is a bit challenging. But these are reading right around 200 degrees internal. And now off they come and into my oven, these are gonna go at 170 degrees. Nice long heated rest. All that really does is just help the carryover cook and help the meat rest really slowly so it retains all of its juices. It helps turn that gelatin into collagen. Just a nice little trick but out of the oven I threw it in the vac chamber sealed it up nice and tight and now I'm gonna pop it in the freezer till this thing is frozen solid then tomorrow I'm gonna throw it in my suitcase and fly to Denver Made it to Denver, drove a couple hours north now we are in Cheyenne Wyoming how you doing dad good Brad how are you good that was uh, not the best day of travel but certainly not the worst two-hour flight not bad how you doing mom I'm good how are you Brad good nice you... to be together it always is but oh god there's an owl out there he's, he's not a real one are you sure this is a cute little patio we're in an Airbnb and I hear there's a grill out there but only here for a couple days so probably won't be able to fire that thing up but I know what everyone is thinking how those pastrami's fly Still frozen, so you can in fact vac seal a brisket, stick it in your luggage, just like that. No questions were asked, I didn't search the bag. Left the house at seven. It is now two, which I guess would be three Texas time. So yeah, bottom of play and stay cold enough to keep your briskets frozen. But now we're gonna go link up with the rest of the family. Thanksgiving day, guys, how's the puzzle going? Going great. It's going. It's back breaking. <laughs> back breaking. 900. 59 pieces. Did you just make that number up? I think it's 957. Uh, yep, 957. This will be no done before dinner. Picture. No picture. The cheese man himself. Dun da da dun dun! <laughs> I didn't think that was gonna get done today. Great job, gang. Are you ready for a lovely oh, Thanksgiving ready. dinner? Did you see the turkey? No. Muffy, will you uh, give me a sneak peek of this bird? <sighs> there it is. That is a beauty. Look at that skin. Ah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What do you got there, bud? That's an old fashioned. I'll make the best old fashions. Yeah, Look at him in there. With my skin and the turkey's okay too. Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a classic traditional looking bird. This is when we find out if the filmmaking gene is innate and we're because we're twins. Right? Right. So maybe we both got it. Boom! Big reveal. He's really got a pretty big peanut gallery going. I don't know where I thought that sentence was going. <laughs> How you feeling, Abby? 
Beautiful spread. Very chilly here in Wyoming. Love it. It's now Friday night. It is my turn to make dinner for 16 people. So I just pulled the briskets out. They have fully thawed in the fridge over the last couple days. We're also making some salmon. And that's just in case someone doesn't want some heavy red meat. But as you can see, it got real snowy and cold. And I'm not mad about it, but I wish I didn't choose a 19 degree day to fire up a Weber here in Wyoming. And uh, that's it right there. So we're gonna get that fired up, but let's get that salmon rub down first. And the snow continues to fall. And you'd think that people from New Hampshire would know how to manage in the snow. But Dave never could get this car up over the edge. He tried, he failed. Into the oven we go, rocking the solid 300 degrees. It's not going out on the Weber? No. It got real cold. Hey Brad, I hear it's 10. Yep, 10 degrees. Beautiful day. <laughs> Don't worry, the fire will keep me warm though. That's satisfying. I haven't cooked with briquettes in a while. Where's your salmon? It's in the fridge. Oh. That's, that is the convenient part. That is convenient. This. And check out how shiny these are. Brand new Weber. Yet it's another slow, puzzle. But not... How many puzzles have we done this trip? This is our three point uh, six, I'd say. Yep. Muffy, Muffy, what's the most amount of puzzles ever done during a Thanksgiving? I couldn't tell you. I'm pretty impressed with three point six. I don't think we beat three. You know, it is kind of nice to cook outside during the holidays. There's like 19 people running around, and I love them all. But I was gonna say it's quiet out here, but there's sirens in the back. Anyway, let's go ahead and throw on. They're watching me like vultures. <laughs> On we go. Ooh, all that rub turned into like a syrup. Do two rounds on this. Ooh, Looks you. good. Oh, you've been working hard out there. You know, it's a tough job. Someone's got to do it. Someone's got it. With a nice cold middle of life. <laughs> now, you just get elk at your house, right? Or do you go out with I do. Them? You just, just, you, just walk, you just walk on the back porch and... Yep. <laughs> yep. Crossbow. So let us know if you want to see that video because I think that needs to happen. <laughs> Either that or we could go hang out with your brother because I think a lot of my fans might be fans of your brother as well. Oh, that one? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Pro wrestler but Shawn Michaels. It's awfully tough to get a hold of him because he's so busy with the WWE. But we could only try. Folks, this is a soy maple glaze that we're going to top these salmon with. It's huge. You know how it is. got to say, it's a little strange cooking in 10 degree weather on the Weber kettle. Probably should have put some more coals in there. All right, fresh off the grill. If only I had a Platter. Platter Thank boy! Thanks for helping me cook this. <laughs> you did all the hard work. <laughs> By the way, I threw a chunk of hickory on there a minute ago while these are finishing up, so we're gonna get a little extra smoke on them. God, my hands don't work in this chill. Oh! That is very hot, but it feels incredibly good on my cold hands. It's time to slice this up and see how it came out. Oh, nice and tender. Muffy, will you give this a taste test for us? That is so good. <laughs> it's wonderful. But of course, we expected that from you. Look at that brine pan. Oh, oh God, perfect. we're going to lose it. Perfect. Oh, oh. Very tender. Mm. You Thank you. You need another one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. All right, that's the lean side. We'll talk about this in a minute, folks. But uh, this is the fattier side, just for the people around. <laughs> for the audience. It's so hard to cook well. Way to go, back. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll have one. You. Thank you. Well, here comes the crowd. I don't want to be greedy. Someone's got to do it. Quick. I'm going to be I'm greedy. Step up. <laughs> oh my god. So good. Oh. Mm. Some say that's the best bite so on the whole cow right there. Mm. And that some, is so good. Okay, some now would tell be us. Now tell us about the brisket. Looking nice. Came off the pit at 6 a.m., so you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and then I rested it down, back sealed it up, and here we are. Bravo! Bravo! For anyone who wants some of salmon. And I know that salmon and pastrami is a weird combo, but it wasn't meant to be together. It's just kind of a either or for the people that don't want red meat. Kind of surfing it is yeah. a surfing <laughs> dish. <laughs> oh yeah, please do. Ooh. That's a beautiful plate of food. There you I go. Was, oh, I was gonna grab it. Mm -hmm. You, you are you not. Sir, I'm going fatty. I don't usually go fatty, but I'm just drunk oh, enough. Potatoes look hmm. beautiful. Look at these beautiful potatoes. That's a perfect plate. I think I did a pretty good job. Not bad for a couple of twins from New Hampshire. All of that is going in here. Well, good. 
<laughs> but good looking stromy. Glad I didn't heat up both. I did not need to make two. But, yeah. You know. I'll take one home. Don't worry. I was gonna say it's a gift that keeps on giving. You know, if you show up with extra, everybody loves taking pastrami with them. But we're gonna eat this meal off camera. Yeah. So this is not just platter boy. This is my cousin Michaela, and you are 50% Italian, right? Correct. So we're gonna be seeing a lot more of him. Hopefully pretty soon when you take me all around Italy and we try some good food. Ooh, would love it. Coming up. Randy, how's the pastrami? Excellent. How's the salmon? I wouldn't know. I, I didn't get to any of this. It's salmon. really good. Are you just not a salmon guy? <laughs> I love salmon. You just don't love me. No, that's true. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, if I had to choose one or the other, I'm going to take the brisket. I'm right there with you every time. Do you know who else needs to eat some of this brisket? And without further ado, I think it's time for the official taste tests. Wait, go. Oh, yes. Oh, good boy. All right, there we go. That was it. Sunny is right here. It's sunny. <laughs> Everybody liked my food better than Brad's. That is the consensus, yeah. Your girl makes good potatoes. The potatoes were great. It was your trick, though, that made them good. It was Kenji Lopez's trick of the baking soda in the water. Yeah. We, like, taught 80-year-olds a new thing today because of the baking soda. Shh, they're right there. Eggnog, <laughs> anyone? Yes, please. Eggnog? Eggnog, eggnog, Alan, Alan. Nothing to see here. <laughs> okay. It's time to head out. Becca, are you ready? Make no. sure it didn't get lifted Me neither. Muffy, <laughs> thank you so much for everything. Oh, thanks for coming and thanks for the wonderful Who dinner. Was How the was the pastrami? Best. The pastrami was the to die for. It was so, online. so good. Honestly, Vote I'm Quimby. just so <laughs> glad that I didn't have to cook a Thanksgiving meal and you just nailed it as you always do. And you made it You're too kind. Easy. You did. Yeah. You really did. Well, it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe one day I can make cooking a Thanksgiving meal look easy, as you do. But Well, I saw your Thanksgiving video. I really loved what you were doing. And anytime you want to come and cook Thanksgiving, we're here. And anytime you want to come and carve the turkey. Carve the turkey, turkey really? Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do that every year. You just let me know whenever you're ready to give up the you cook everything for Thanksgiving, and I will gladly sub in. Okay! Yay! 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 It'd be fun to collaborate and do it together. Next it's year. Progress Next here. year. Thank Coming you. up. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to cook a big feast for your family and to prove once and for all that you can, in fact, travel with brisket or pastrami and have it turn out absolutely fantastic. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button, let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.